Hi guys, Daniel Rosal here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I want to today put out a thought into uh, the ether, into YouTube and wherever else I post this video talking about, I think one of the most common dilemmas for people who are in self-employment, whether you uh, present yourself, consider yourself to be a freelancer or a consultant is really uh, immaterial for this quandary. And the quandary is as follows. If you uh, get good at inbound marketing, you're going to be getting generating a number of inbound leads. Now, inbound marketing is something I'm personally a huge proponent of. It's what I've dedicated uh, a lot of my career so far to helping clients with to uh, creating effective thought leadership marketing that's going to bring open up conversations. But ultimately, that's really uh, just a better known form of inbound marketing than content marketing. Um, but nevertheless, if you're gonna do that and you're gonna do that well, you are going to get a trickle at least of inbound leads of people coming to you. Now the problem is as follows, if you've been doing this for any length of time, you've probably already figured out that you can waste a boatload of time talking to every single inbound lead. You might get very excited at the start that wow, people are coming to me now, so much easier than having to do uh, cold pitching and whatnot, it's great. Uh, it is great, but um, you can't just bank on inbound leads being leads that are going to convert. That's what I've found. They're ultimately just leads and leads require a qualification process. Now, the most basic qualification I found helpful is talking about money at the very start. The more elaborate one is something called BANT, B-A-N-T, uh, a common qualifying acronym. That's the one I actually use. Budget, authority, need, timing, going through those four variables to make sure if it's at least a potential runner. But the first letter in BANT you might notice is budget, it's B, it's that money conversation. Now, um, there's another problem here and the problem is this. In today's marketplace, you really want to be a value-based seller. This is another thing I've talked about. Value-based selling is when you are quantifying or attempting to quantify the potential value you could bring to a client and that's what you're selling. You're not selling your professional services like you're selling pizza it's going to be 15 bucks for a pizza and two bucks for this uh, topping and that's how a lot of freelancers sell themselves the problem with that strategy is that if you acquire your clients based upon price or they're choosing you because you're cheap in other words you're going to lose your clients based on price too that's one of the best uh, things i've ever learned from sales from the sales literature i can't remember unfortunately which book I read that in, but it's really, really stuck with me over the years. If you win your clients based on price, you're gonna lose your clients based on price. And the problem is that in today's globalized freelance marketplace, it's both a curse and a blessing. The, the blessing aspect is that you can access opportunity no matter where you're sitting in the world, you can do work no matter where you're sitting in the world, but it's also allowing people with completely different costs of living to compete so if you're going head to head on price, there's gonna be someone almost guaranteed cheaper than you uh, who's able to undercut your rates and score the business. So that's why it's crucial to sell uh, today based on value. Now, there is a problem with what I'm talking about, talking money early in the process, and that's that you're going to quickly anchor yourself. Now, I have a friend who works as a professional haggler, for want of a better word, as a professional negotiator. And he would tell me that if I mentioned a price, doing my current solution, which is to say, my rates start here. So if someone comes to me today and says, I'm looking at, uh, you know, I want to roll out a thought leadership marketing program, could you do it? What you don't want to happen is for me, and I've done this, jump on a call, put together a proposal, have two meetings, three meetings, you get to the very tail end and they say, well, uh, yeah, we had a budget of a hundred bucks for this project. So you never want to get to that kind of a situation. So my strategy has been learning from those uh, when they happened is to say my rates start here. Therefore, if you're able to meet those, if that's within your ballpark, I'll continue, love, would love to continue the conversation, talk further about value, I'll, I'll go through the rest of my qualifying uh, criteria. But if, if, if that's not a runner, then there's no point having this conversation. Now, um, my negotiating friend would say that you've just anchored yourself to that figure. So if you say my rates start at $1,000 in that kind of a transaction, you as the service provider are going to want to maximize your rates. 
the potential customer as a buyer is going to want to minimize their expenditure. That's how the world works. So you're pulling in different directions, but the minute you quote a range, I, my rates start at X. X is what the business is going to hear. So they're gonna say, Daniel can do marketing for a thousand dollars per month, uh, and then maybe try to, try to work with you on scope to fit into that budget, but that's not necessarily what you want. So that's kind of the why I call it a quandary because on the one hand, you want to do value-based selling. Inbound marketing, I strongly, strongly encourage anybody in self-employment to start a blog or do a podcast or a video or just get content out somehow that's going to attract people, ideally be strategic about it, uh, but it does work. It does work, I can tell you that from first-hand experience as well as the work I've done with clients. Uh, but it creates, it actually can, can throw up what might sound like a good problem to have of now you've got these leads, uh, what do I do with them? But that can actually be a real impediment to business if all it does is create a kind of a backlog of leads that are not really quality leads, they don't really have the budget and you're gonna wait, potentially waste a ton of time. So what I find uh, my solution has been to do starting from prices and something I've gotten quite good at and not my favorite skill to say I have, but it's having quickly excluding people uh, from my sales pipeline who just can't make those rates uh, because there is not really a point in having those conversations. And those are conversations I may have had before that would have you know, taken up hours uh, out of my week in terms of preparation, having the calls, and I'm avoiding those now. So I don't know if there's a better way. Potentially there is a much better way, and that's why I said at the start of this video, if anyone has such a way, uh, please feel free to tell me my methodology is stupid or you know a better way uh, in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. If you'd like to get more videos from me, then feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel.